Are you struggling to understand closure transducers and their potential pitfalls? You're not alone. Today, we're diving into some common issues and clarifying what you need to know to use transducers safely and effectively. I totally get it. Transducers can be tricky and the documentation can sometimes feel overwhelming. Many developers have faced confusion when trying to implement them correctly. You're in the right place to clear things up. Let's take a look at the specific question at hand. One user asked about the safety of writing and using transducers, referencing some important rules from the closure documentation. They wanted to know what these rules mean and what context refers to in this scenario. So, what are these rules? The first rule states that if a step function returns a reduced value, no more inputs should be supplied to it. This ensures that the transducible process behaves predictably. Let's break this down further. The second rule emphasizes that a completing process must call the completion operation on the final accumulated value exactly once. This is crucial for ensuring that your transducer completes its work properly. Finally, the third rule warns that a transducing process must encapsulate references to the function returned by invoking a transducer. This is important because these functions may be stateful and unsafe for use across threads. And stick around. At the end of this video, I'll share a practical example that ties all these rules together, making it easier to understand how to apply them in your own code. For instance, consider a scenario where you're processing a collection of data. If your step function returns a reduced value, you need to ensure that no additional data is sent to it. This prevents unexpected behavior in your transducer. In another example, when completing a transduction, make sure to call the completion operation only once on the final value. This avoids any potential issues with double processing. Lastly, when using transducers in a multi-threaded environment, be cautious about stateful functions. Always encapsulate them properly to avoid race conditions or unexpected behavior. Fun fact, did you know that Clojure was designed to be a functional programming language that runs on the Java virtual machine? It combines the best of both worlds. Here's a quick takeaway. Always remember these three rules when working with transducers. They will help you avoid common pitfalls and write safer, more efficient code. And there you have it. Understanding Clojure transducers doesn't have to be daunting. With these rules in mind, you're well on your way to mastering them. If you found this video helpful, please subscribe for more insights and tips. First, let's discuss the first rule regarding reduced values. If a step function returns a reduced value, the user must ensure that no more inputs are supplied to that step function. This means that once a reduced value is returned, the process should stop feeding it more data. Next, we have the second rule about the completion process. The user must call the completion operation on the final accumulated value exactly once. This ensures that the transducer finishes processing correctly without any unintended side effects. Now, let's look at the third rule regarding stateful functions. The user should encapsulate references to the function returned by invoking a transducer. This is crucial because these functions may be stateful and could lead to unsafe behavior if used across multiple threads. Finally, let's clarify what is meant by context in this discussion. In this case, context refers to the specific environment or situation in which the transducers are being applied. Understanding the context helps the user apply these rules effectively. This user explains important rules for using closure transducers safely. First, if a step function returns a reduced value, no more inputs should be supplied. For example, the take while transducer stops processing once a condition fails. Second, a completing process must call the completion operation on the final accumulated value exactly once, as seen with the partition by transducer. Lastly, references to the step function must be encapsulated to avoid state issues across threads. This means using the same instance for processing a single data source. 
the user also clarifies what context means in this discussion. It refers to implementing new types of transducible processes, such as those working with collections or asynchronous data streams. For instance, you could create a transducible process for handling data from a socket, allowing for flexible data transformations regardless of the source.